Oh, I had snacks at the fast food center outside school with some friends, and after some time, my stomach started aching. It must not have digested properly. Take this pill; it will help you. Welcome to this lesson on digestion in humans. Hi, folks. I'm Peekaboo. Are you familiar with the different parts of your digestive system? My guess is no. Would you like to see them? All right then. Let me take you through a journey inside your body and show you what happens to the food you eat. Let's begin. This is the mouth, one of the main parts of the digestive system. The other parts are esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine, forming the alimentary canal, known as the digestive tract. Organ secreting juices also help in breaking down the complex food into a simpler form. These are the salivary glands. The gastric glands on the wall of the stomach, the liver, the pancreas, and the intestinal glands. The digestive tract, along with these associated glands, together forms the digestive system. Let me take you through each part of the digestive system. The mouth, or the buccal cavity, is bounded in front by the upper and the lower lips. On top by the roof of the mouth, on the bottom by the tongue, and on the sides by the cheeks. Food is taken in through the mouth. This is known as ingestion. The teeth break down the food into smaller pieces. Do you know the number of teeth you have? Adults have 32 teeth, each of which is rooted in a separate socket in the gums. All of them look different too. Let me show you the different teeth you have. These are the incisors. They act like scissors and are used for biting food. These are the canines, sharp and pointed. They are used to pierce or tear food. These are your premolars, and these big ones are your molars, or the principal grinders. These teeth help in chewing and grinding food. The last molar of each side in each jaw is called the wisdom tooth. Did you know that there are bacteria that live in your mouth? These bacteria break sugars from the leftover food in your mouth and release acids. These acids gradually damage your teeth, causing tooth decay. If your gum or teeth pains, it is time for you to visit a dentist, or else. The pain may result in severe toothache, and in extreme cases, even lead to the loss of your tooth. To prevent infection, brush your teeth at least twice a day using dentum and dental floss. Dental floss is a special thread which is placed between two teeth and moved vertically to remove the trapped food particles. So much about your pearly whites. Now let's move on. Let's meet the first member of the gland family, the salivary glands. They secrete saliva, a transparent fluid that helps to break down complex components like starch into simpler forms like sugars. Saliva keeps the mouth moist, provides an alkaline medium for food digestion, helps the food particles stick together to form bolus or small balls, and also helps in talking. This fleshy organ is called the tongue. Being fleshy, it can move in all directions. It is attached to the floor of the buccal cavity. It helps in talking and in moving the food in different directions while chewing. It also mixes the saliva with the food and helps to swallow it. The tongue is also used to clean the food particles from the teeth after eating and to taste food. The various taste buds located at different areas on the tongue help detect different tastes. The buccal cavity leads to a common region for food and air called the pharynx. Do you know 
why adults insist that talking with your mouth full is a bad habit? This is because both the esophagus and the windpipe carrying air from nostril to lungs start from the pharynx. When you swallow food, the flap-like valve called the epiglottis closes the windpipe. So, if you talk while eating, chances are that the valve does not close fully, thereby allowing food particles to enter the windpipe. This is why you feel choked. <coughs> this is the esophagus. Also known as the food pipe or the gullet is about 25 centimeters long. This pipe runs along the neck and the chest. It conducts the food from the throat to the stomach. The food is pushed down by special movement of the walls called peristalsis. It takes place throughout the elementary canal thereby pushing the food downward. Now, the food is entering the stomach. It is closed off at each end by a ring of muscular valve. The valve at the front end prevents backflow of food into the esophagus. The valve at the rear end prevents flow of food from the stomach until it is thoroughly churned up. The stomach is U-shaped. It is the widest part of the elementary canal. And in an adult, it can hold 2 to 3 liters of food at a time. In the stomach, the food remains for a minimum of 3 to 4 hours. Here, it is thoroughly churned and converted into a pulp-like form. Its walls are thick and highly muscular. With gastric glands on the inner wall that aids digestion with the help of hydrochloric acid, mucus and digestive juices. Each of these juices has a specific function. The mucus protects the inner wall of the stomach. The acids kill the bacteria and make a suitable acidic medium in the stomach which helps in digestion of proteins. The digestive juices break proteins into simpler substances known as amino acids. This is then passed into the small intestine. Now we get to the small intestine. This is a highly coiled tunnel-like tube. It is the longest part of the elementary canal and is about 7.5 meters long and about 2.5 centimeters wide. The C-shaped tunnel is called the duodenum. It is the upper part of the small intestine. Here you get to see two other glands, the liver and the pancreas. The liver is the largest gland in the body. It is reddish brown and is located in the upper part of the abdomen on the right side just below the diaphragm. The liver secretes a yellowish green watery fluid called the bile. The secreted bile is temporarily stored in a sac called the gallbladder. It has a narrow tube like structure called the bile duct and it opens in the duodenum. Bile plays an important role in the digestion of fats. It breaks the larger fat molecules into tiny droplets, thereby increasing the surface area and helps in the easy digestion of fat. The pancreas, on the other hand, is a large cream-colored leaf-like gland positioned just below the stomach. The narrow tube arising from it is called the pancreatic duct and it joins the bile duct. The pancreas secretes the pancreatic juice that helps digest carbohydrates, proteins and fats. The pancreatic juice converts carbohydrates into simple sugars and glucose, proteins into amino acids and the fats to fatty acids and glycerol. The food passes from the duodenum to the lower part of the small intestine where the intestinal juice completes the digestion of all the components of the food similar to the upper part. The digested food is also absorbed by the body in the small intestine. 
the inner walls of the small intestine have millions of small finger-like projections called the villi. Due to their presence, the surface area for digestion as well as absorption of digested food increases by eight times. Each villus has a complex set of small, thin blood vessels close to its surface and a lymph vessel. The surface of the villi allows the amino acids and the glucose to reach the blood capillaries and the fatty acids and the glycerol reach the lymph vessels. The absorbed amino acids and glucose are transported by the blood vessels to the liver. The fatty acids and the glycerol are taken by the lymph vessel. Together this process is called as absorption. From here, it is sent to various parts of the body according to the need of the body. Energy needed for various activities is obtained from glucose. With the help of oxygen, it breaks down to release energy in the cell. The amino acids are utilized to form new cells. Excess amino acids cannot be stored in the body and is expelled out. Some fats are used in the synthesis of certain compounds in the body cells and the excess fat is deposited below the skin or around the internal organs. This process of utilization of absorbed food such as glucose, amino acids, fatty acids and glycerol is called as assimilation. The digestion and absorption process in the small intestine takes almost four hours to complete. The undigested and unabsorbed food then enters the large intestine. This is the large intestine. It seems wider than the small intestine but is shorter in length. It is about 1.5 meters long. The undigested food that enters the large intestine has a lot of water and some salts. The food then travels upward in the ascending colon of the large intestine. Then across the abdomen in the transverse colon and back downwards on the other side of the body in the descending colon. The function of the large intestine is to absorb the water and salts from the undigested food material. During its course, the water and salts are absorbed by the wall of the large intestine. The undigested semi-solid waste that passes into the rectum is called feces and is temporarily stored here. It is then removed through the anus at intervals in a process called ejection. I hope you've had some enriching food for thought, if not for the stomach. <coughs> Congratulations! You have successfully completed this lesson on digestion in humans. You will now be able to list the different parts of the human digestive system and describe the process of digestion in humans.